Greetings fellow speculators. When talking about speculative natural resource stocks, lots of people ask, how much does it cost? I know they're referring to the share price, but it seems like they should be asking, how much does it cost to run that company? Today I'd like to walk you through some speculative natural resource companies that I'm following and the cost it, it takes to run those companies on a monthly basis. I like to think of my finances on a monthly basis, so I've broken it down to monthly costs and US dollars. So let's get started. Let's start with the most expensive to the cheapest. Canadian Overseas Petroleum, $521,000 a month. They've got a prospect offshore Liberia with ExxonMobil as a partner signed up to pay all the bills to drill that project and swing for the fences. Chariot Oil and Gas, also looking for oil offshore Africa in the Pacific margins, trying to use other people's money to swing for the fences. Trading for about cash prices, um, spending $500,000 a month. Alder and Iron Ore, Canadian listed company, trying to develop a large iron ore deposit in Canada using a Chinese company's money. Swinging for the fences with the partner's money. Spending $473,000 a month. Sterling Energy, another oil exploration company with prospects offshore Africa. Looking to swing for the fences with partner's money. Spending $341,000 a month. Also trading at about half their cash values, or just a hair above half their cash values. Pura Vida Energy. Spending $280,000 a month. They've got prospects offshore Africa looking for oil. And one of those prospects offshore Morocco, they've got Freeport McMoran putting up virtually all the money to drill a couple wells and swing for the fences. Almond and Minerals, listings the U.S. and Canada. Spending $257,000 trying to develop a gold deposit they found in Mexico. It was so good they went alone and didn't use partners on that project when most of the time they use partners to work all their projects. They're looking to spin off the prospect generation side of their business where partners will use money to money and expertise to test those projects going forward. I'm more interested in that spin off than the main company but it's it's spending $257,000 a month the way it's set up now. Eurasian Minerals has prospects all over the world, They've got partners of the who's who's list of partners, all kinds of companies working their projects, using their money and their expertise to test the deals, and Eurasian Minerals is spending $237,000 a month uh, to run the company. FAR Limited, listed in the Australian markets, spending about $217,000 a month. They've got prospects offshore Africa swinging for the fences, looking to make big discoveries with partners' money. In 2014, it looks like they made two large discoveries using Karn and Conical Phillips' money to drill for oil offshore Senegal. Reservoir Minerals. They're looking for large multi-metallic deposits in Serbia. They got Freeport Memorial on paying the vast majority of their exploration bills. It looks like they've made a big copper gold discovery there. Now they're spending $180,000 to run the company. Revelo Resources used to be Iron Creek Capital. They've got lots of projects in northern Chile and looking to joint venture off to partners. A couple of them are joint ventured to companies like Kinross Gold. Spending $179,000 a month. Africa Energy have lots of projects in uh, former Somalia or Somaliland that are kind of dormant right now while they're looking for other prospects and they generally like to partner up with other companies to use their money and expertise to test their theories so it's kind of a shell company now sitting on projects that aren't happening but they're spending hundred seventy six thousand dollars a month they pride themselves in top of the line management and I think that's part of the expense is they keep the, the best of the best management around. Vara Exploration. Lots of projects in Peru, some in Brazil and also Colombia and around the region. Um, looking to use other companies money 
uh, to test those projects. Spending $147,000 a month. Generally, these guys have been on the more conservative side, but I think they hired a management team or bought a management team and merged them together a couple of years ago that increased their operating costs. I think that's part of why they're higher up on the list. Fission 3.0 spun off of Fission, uh, the previous two fissions, uh, looking to take a lot of these uranium deposits and prospects that they have and use partners' money to test them, find the next big uranium deposit, mostly in Canada, some in South America. Um, spending $128,000 a month. Renaissance Gold prospects mostly in Nevada. Um, continuously signing up partners to spend money and use their expertise to work work their prospects. Spending about $101,000 a month looking for gold. Mill Rock Resources looking for gold, copper, whatever economic metals they can find. Mostly in Alaska, recently added on prospects in Mexico and New Mexico. Um, spending $93,000 a month. Strategic metals, mostly with projects in um, you know, British Columbia, Yukon, Alaska. Spending, looking for all kinds of economic metals, materials. Spending $84,000 a month. Trading at discounts to cash values. Miranda Gold. Historically, have always had proj projects in Nevada. Recently, they tried to sell those pros projects in Nevada to another company and just focusing on their their newer endeavors in Colombia, trying to line up more partners to work those projects. Historically, they've had the who's who's list of major mining companies working their projects. Now spending about eighty-one thousand dollars American a month. Mirsol Resources. Historically had a nice silver deposit in Argentina they sold to CORE. Now they're focusing in more on northern Chile as the Argentinian politics have turned sour and the pricing is awful. And as they work those projects in northern Chile, they've attracted new partners and keep pushing those projects forward with partners' money and expertise and some of their own. Spending $72,000 a month. Legend Gold Prospects in different parts of Africa um, using company like Rand Gold's money and expertise to work their projects, spending $66,000 a month. Nevada Sunrise, prospect in Nevada with some other prospects there using Pilot Gold's money to work their main project, spending $64,000 a month looking for gold. Transition Metals, prospects in Ontario spending about $63,000 a month one with main major partners like Implats or Impala out of South Africa looking for platinum on, on one of their prospects. They've got a laundry list of prospects that they're trying to sign partners up on. Copper Bank Resources is more of a hoarding company trying to hoard prospects to turn into you know, as the price of the copper goes higher that those projects become more valuable in the future. Um, another way of saying collecting non-economic projects, hoping the economics change over time. Spending $62,000 a month. Arena Minerals. Um, spending $58,000 a month. Riverside Resources. Mostly prospects in Mexico. Um, some in British Columbia using other companies money to test their prospects and give give their prospects more validity by using the other people's expertise as well spending forty nine thousand dollars a month Constantine Metal has a deal with a, a Japanese company to virtually put up all the money to test a project in British Columbia polymetallic deposit um, they're spending about $39,000 a month. Everum Resources, mostly prospects in Mexico and some, one, one or two in Arizona, um, looking to use other companies' money like uh, Arcelor Mattel out of India as an example of one of their main partners, 
um, using their money and expertise to test their projects, spending $31,000 a month. Canisil Resources with partners like Mag Silver, spending money looking for silver on one of their prospects and other prospects that are trying to joint venture off and get partners to pick the bills up on, spending $29,000 a month, mostly located in Mexico. Tarsus and Estrella now have turned into Alonza, so these are kind of older numbers, but uh, Alonza is looking for gold in, uh, in uh, British Columbia, Yukon, and uh, in Peru as well. They've got projects spread through the Americas, spending $27,000 a month. Marifil Mines, mostly in Argentina, or all in Argentina, um, has pretty much broke. They don't have a whole lot of money to spend, hence they're getting down towards the bottom of the list of some of the cheapest run companies around. They've had prospects in the past for gold, silver, and all kinds of materials. They've tried joint venturing off, especially before the Argentinian markets fell apart, uh, spending $23,000 a month. Midland Exploration, um, mostly in Quebec, prospects next to notable deposits like Virginia's old Eleanor deposit that's now owned by a Cisco, or part of the royalties are owned by a Cisco, and uh, the, uh, the operatorship is Gold Corp, and those kinds of deposits, trying to joint venture off projects in that neighborhood and elsewhere around Quebec, um, spending $23,000 a month. Alta in Nevada, projects in Nevada looking for gold, run by an Australian guy that's put a group together to go after these things, and landed a pretty solid joint venture deal with Tech Cominco out of Vancouver, um, spending $20,000 a month. Another one that doesn't really have any money in it that is is being fed by the, the management as the company goes. Kilo Gold Mines. They're trading for a discount to their cash values. They don't have huge amounts of cash, but they're still trading for less than the cash values of the company. Uh, doesn't seem to have any management. It's kind of a ghost ghost ship the way it's run right now. I think it's being run by the major shareholders, basically. Um, and hence, I think they're at the bottom of the list as the cheapest run one out there. They've got a joint venture deal with Rand Gold, using Rand Gold's money to look for more around uh, Northern Democratic Republic of the Congo, a northeastern corner of the DRC, where Rand Gold has a big gold mine they just built called Kabili. Um, hopefully they can find some more or another one of those add into their other project. $14,000 a month. That's the bottom of the list for prospect generators, publicly listed prospect generators that I'm following. Here's a breakdown of the list. It's in thousands of U.S. dollars a month with Canadian Overseas Petroleum being the most expensive one of the ones I'm following. They've got a sweet partner. Um, the Exxon Mobil and the cheapest one being that Kilo Gold Mines trading a discount to cash with Rand Gold partnering the projects looking for gold. Now there's averages and the average of, of these is like $144,000 a month I believe. But I don't want to be the average. I'm a speculator. I want to hone in on the top of the top and so after putting this together it moves kilo gold mines up up my target list a bit I'm gonna watch them and study them even closer um, but other ones like Everham resources I've always had an affinity towards um, and you know that Midland exploration I'd like to get to know those guys a lot more too as well as all 10 Nevada there's there's a bunch of companies in that top five or something that are very low cost well-run companies that I think I should study more and so that's what I'm learning from putting this together I just stop getting sucked into these half million dollar a month uh, holes in the bucket and start focusing in on the ones that are numbers that I could I could manage myself uh, kinds of numbers much more realistic so I hope you've enjoyed this this uh, knowledge and information and a different way of looking at some of the public companies out there and you're willing to compare what you're invested into into these these kinds of companies and why. And I would love and appreciate 
any comments or corrections I know I've screwed something up in here tell me in the comments below or other companies you'd like to see in this um, this kind of lineup or where they rank or where where and why you think they should be in this list I'd like to hear about that put them in the comments below please feel free to ask any questions as well um, if you're interested in more updates and looks at natural resource companies, especially speculative natural resource companies looking to find large assets, I'd suggest you please sign up to my YouTube channel and uh, feel free to check out my website as well, prosperousadventure.com. Thank you for listening. It's Luke Smith.